Uh, we'll pray at the end um, of, of the Bible study tonight, but tonight we're, we're going back into Romans. And uh, I'm going to try to get through uh, all of chapter 1 tonight. I might, there might be about six verses that I don't get through, or maybe four, but I'm going to roll them in to start into chapter 2 anyway, because it's kind of high. Kind of how it works out. Again, you know, when you study in the Bible, we, we go chapter and verses, but when they wrote it, it was a continuous thought. So mm -hmm. where our chapter and verse might end, their You're thought might continue. <laughs> so sometimes we don't we don't work out the way we we're looking at it. <clears throat> but uh, that's what we do. I want to just kind of finish up what I had started week before last and uh, we're looking at the first 17 verses but I'm not going to look at all of those tonight but just I'm going to point out a couple of things that I didn't get to uh, and then we'll go into to verse 18 and we'll take it verse by verse but going back to verse 1 yeah. part chapter 1 yeah. going back to verse 1 uh, Paul talks about in uh, he says Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised <clears throat> before and through his prophets in the holy scripture so we want to want to see here that, that that this is not an improvised gospel that he is preaching it ain't something new it's not something made up and he's just saying the case right here. He said, the prophets promised this. And now I am talking about what I'm telling you is something that is not new. Matter of fact, it was promised by our forefathers, our patriarchs, and all the prophets. So we want, he, you know, and for us, when there are, people have all kind of discussions and and uh, wild ideas about where the scripture comes from, or where the gospel comes from. And even now, uh, people, as they are discussing what happens in the Middle East as far as uh, Hamas and Israel, they keep saying that that is the Palestinians' homeland. And it is, it, there is no such people as Palestinians. Number one, they call the place Palestine, and the reason they call it Palestine is because that's what the British mandate called it. But up until the early 20th century, it was not called, you know, really known by Palestine. Palestinian is not a people group. They're Arabs. And so to be precise, they're Arabs. And the Arabs come along way, way after the Jews. And so that's what people would do with Scripture. They would take Scripture and say, well, you know, this man Jesus come along, so they made up all this stuff about him and said all this and that. But isn't it funny when everybody says, follow the science? If you go to the science of archaeology, archaeology always proves what the Scripture says. Mm -hmm. So... So go ahead and follow the science because it's going to lead you right back to what the scripture says. As a matter of fact, Don, science began the, the whole deal about science began as a study of God. It wasn't to disprove God. Now science is always trying to disprove God. But science began as a study of to understand what God had already said. God was a given. Now, I didn't mean to get off and all that, but <laughs> simply to say that when he says promised by the prophets, that's what he means. Then in verse 3, he said concerning his son, who was the son of God, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. I'm in verse 4 now. <clears throat> holiness by uh, Jesus Christ our Lord. So he keeps saying the Son, the Son, the Son of God. And he talks about Jesus was declared to be 
the Son of God with power and holiness, and he was the, and he was resurrected from the dead. Again, I'll say this. I say this a lot of time when I say that statement, John. Uh, I know Lazarus was raised from the dead. I know in the New Testament we see all these people that were raised from the dead. In the Old Testament we see people raised from the dead. But when you see them, when when we're talking about, he said they. He doesn't just say raised from the dead. He says resurrected. There's a difference. These people, Lazarus was raised from the dead, but he wasn't resurrected. When Jesus came out of the tomb, he was resurrected. That's the difference. Resurrected means he, was, he wasn't, wasn't the same as when he came out. When he came out, he had a different body. When he came out, he was different. And he came out eternal. His body was, one, when he came out, his body was not mortal anymore. It was eternal. How do I know that? Because he walked through walls and all kinds of stuff. Because he was in one place walking down the road from Emmaus and Nick knew he was gone. He had a different body. There's a difference there. Yeah. Don't touch me. I'm... Yes. Don't touch me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. But these others that were raised from the dead, they lived again, but they died they again. Died. But Jesus didn't. Yeah. Did. Gee, you know, that's yeah. the difference. He lives in the same body. They, they died. Because they still had a mortal body that was just raised from the dead. He, he came back to life. But Jesus was immortal when he came. So there's a difference. And that's what he says here. And then <clears throat> some key facts that we all need to kind of remember when you talk about the Lord. So he, was, he died, he was buried, and he rose. That's what I just read in, in verse 4. He died, he was buried, and he rose. And I always like to say this. And, you know, when I'm talking about my Lord, my Savior, and I got this in my spirit a long time ago and settled it in my spirit so that when I talk about him, I understand who I'm talking about. If you'll understand, he ain't just God. He ain't just a pretty picture on the wall. He's just not a name in the book. But when you understand, John, who he is, right? Know more about him. And I mean, I, I won't forget that lesson that you taught on, in there on the men's breakfast. That you know who he is. You got to know who he is. Who is your God? Who is your Savior? Well, mine was born of a virgin. Mine lived a sinless life. Mine walked about doing good, performing miracles, and, did, and doing good to all that he was around. Mine was falsely accused. Mine was unjustly tried. Mine was unjustly convicted. Mine suffered in, in a, a terrible beating. He was persecuted. Had a crown of thorns pressed on. This is my God. Mine went to a cross and said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they do. Mine had a was pierced in the side with a spear and said, it is finished. Mine was put in a borrowed tomb, wrapped up. Mine on the third day came up. Glory to God. Mine appeared to many, even as much as 500 who saw him and witnessed his resurrection. Mine ascended to heaven, accompanied by angels who said, why stand ye here gazing? For the one that you see going, you will, he will come again in like manner. Now, when you get that in your mind, and you think about who he is, when a problem comes your way, this is my God right here. And when you're talking to people, see, he ain't, he's not just another prophet anyway. Glory to God. Key facts about him. That he's buried. You need to get them key facts in your mind about him. <clears throat> he wasn't a good, just a good man. <clears throat> he didn't. He wasn't just a good philosopher. He wasn't just a good teacher. He wasn't just some prophet walking around performing miracles. He was all those things, mm -hmm. and in power, and in salvation. <clears throat> in verse uh, uh, sixteen, he said, "For I am not ashamed of the gospel, mm -hmm. for it is the power of God." For salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew 
first mm -hmm. and also to the Greek. And to the Greek, that means to the Gentiles. Everybody in here, Gentile? <laughs> well, I'm in, brother. Because I, I am. But first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. They had to go to the Jew first. They the first one to get the promise. They, and then he went to the ones who would receive it. Glory to God. He said, I have a people that, he said, I have other sheep. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And ain't what the Mormons teach about other sheep. Mm -hmm. His other sheep was the Gentiles. Right. Praise God for that. He said, I ain't ashamed of God. I like that. For I am not ashamed. For it's a, because, why? It's a power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Now this is the writer we have already established. As Paul goes, says it. Paul. He, he starts out, I, I'm Paul. Hey, this is from Paul. Mm -hmm. But he, you remember, <clears throat> his zealousness, see, God will take your weakness or your, mm -hmm. what you use. God knows that. And so his zealousness for the Lord was such <laughs> that he would kill people who defined themselves. He, he was the one standing there holding the coat. When Stephen was crucified, was stoned, <clears throat> God took that same zealousness and, and then talked to him on the road to Damascus. He said, Why, how, how long are you going to keep on doing what you're doing? I am Jesus. So Paul, this is Paul right here. And then Paul said, I ain't ashamed of the gospel. I know who he is. He spoke to me in a resurrected body. On the road to Damascus. You know, I'm just saying that's why he said well, I'm not I read that scripture, I never had seen it. Or <laughs> it said, well, it, what's the it there? That's the gospel message. Yes. The, the message of the gospel, of the power of God accompanies the true preaching of the gospel so that people can be saved. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it, the gospel. For it. That's power when you preach the word of God. Right. God. When you tell somebody Jesus loves you, mm -hmm. that's power. Man, I'm telling you, I, I, I was talking to somebody today, and I began to hear it, and I began to see it, and I'm seeing it more and more that people with the expression of the gospel of Jesus Christ in sometimes in very simple ways, Paul, is changing lives. Mm -hmm. And his manifested his self, and it's resulting in, in changed lives. In power, he said, of salvation. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of folks need to be saved. I need to be saved. We all need to save because we all sin and come short of the glory of God. We'll see that when we get over to Romans chapter 3. We've all sinned, but we all need a Savior. Amen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the salvation is that he, he brings us out of death into life. He saves us from our sin and brings us into eternity. Glory to God. But he saves us, you know, from death. And, and Gail, he saved me from myself. Because <laughs> I'm subject to make the wrong choice. And I'm subject to make the wrong decision. And just like I was talking about the zealousness of, of Paul, Saul, uh, you know, the devil knows that same zealousness. And he will go after, he would take that zealousness and try, and he did, he used it with Paul to kill people. See? But God took it because and, and used it to save people. Through it. What is it? What is it? Run it. What is it? <laughs> you just said it. It's the gospel. Run it like we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> To the Jews, to the Greek, historically the gospel was pre presented first to the Jewish people, then to the Gentile world. This was also the order that Jesus indicated because for the mission and the Great Commission. And he said that. He said, I come to the Jewish people first. And that was, that was the order. But wasn't nobody left out. So when you say Jew and then Gentile, then you cover the whole world. You know. And, he, and then he said, uh, for in it, what? It. What's the it again, Ronnie? The gospel. The, gospel. The, gospel. the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. 
from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. The key blessing of the gospel is that it brings Jesus' righteousness, the righteousness that God accepts, and it's all based on faith. Without faith, it's impossible. In Hebrews, you remember we studied it, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6. And so, without faith, you won't believe in Him. See, if I don't have faith, I, I, I'm going to see things that are going to make me doubt. I'm going to experience some things. Remember I, I told you Sunday, I ain't praying for you that you don't go through something. And a lot of people say, well, why? I don't want to go through nothing. But if you don't go through something, your faith will not grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to be buffeted around. You're always going to be slapped around. You're always going to be crying and saying, please pray for me. And, and why is God against me? God ain't for, he, he's for you. He ain't against you. But when you go through something, you'll go through it and your faith will grow. Your faith in Christ Jesus will grow. Glory to God. So, it will not. I've been on them mountains a lot of times. Y'all have too. Everybody, every, every, most everybody in here been in the Smokies. <laughs> you get high up, the trees don't grow good. It took 40 years to get that one limb off of you. Yeah. <laughs> so you walk around like that. <laughs> yeah, I knew what he's talking about. <laughs> walking around one knee, <laughs> shoulders as a other. He's always walking on the side of the mountain. <laughs> 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 Won't nothing grow up there. You don't know how much you need God until you really go through something that's, you know, a trial or something really bad. Yeah. You don't know you how see, much you need. You won't. Because, and, and you see God in the midst of a trial. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I just soon get in the recliner and, and not fool with no trial. Oh, Amen, brother. I'm Amen. telling you, my friend said, hey, I think I know you are. You know, I don't want to go through man and nothing. But like I said Sunday. <laughs> yeah, like I said, that recliner, recliner brings him too, boy. Mm -hmm. I know you real. I just got to go through that. Though. <laughs> but we have to. Yeah. Until we leave this earth. But if we don't have faith, we won't make it. Now, he says in verse 18, I did get there. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, look at how, man, look how he transitions right here. He's talking about the righteous shall live by faith. Now he's saying, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness, look at this, suppress the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we got to keep in mind that what he's saying here. He's, he's giving you, he's telling you about the power and the salvation, but at the same time, want to bring all people. He's giving you as many sides as he can to the character of God. God will not tolerate unrighteousness. Because unrighteousness will, he said, uh, cause the truth of the gospel to be suppressed. Mm -hmm. In other words, and we're going to see how. He's, been, he's going to tell us how. So, <clears throat> so they have been ungodly, they've been unrighteous, they have been suppressed in <clears throat> unrighteous. God made truth available to all humanity, Jews and Greeks alike, but people choose to suppress it because it don't line up with what they want to do. Mm -hmm. it, it don't suit it don't suit them. And so they water it down. They disavow it. Uh, or they just outright say it ain't true. That's right. So I go do my thing. And your thing, and it, 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 Jane Brown was not right. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. And James, man, he was right. <laughs> not this James. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Wow, it's your thing. Yeah. You're going to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And then you have your own God. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that. So in verse 19, he says, For what can be known about God is plain to them. 
because God has shown it to them. Hear that. That's all creation. And look at verse 24. His invisible attributes. Yeah, I'm reading out of the ESV. So it reads a little bit different than probably your translation. Namely, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. In other words, mm -hmm. what he said, if you walk out and look at God's creation, if you could see tonight, which you can't because it's cloudy and rainy, and you just go up and look at the heavens, mm -hmm. God's handprints all over. How can you look at that and say there is no God? I got a friend of mine that went on went on vacation to the Middle East and was out in the desert in a tent. And he said he walked out at night and looked up at the at the sky at night and it was so clear there because there's nothing around. No, no artificial. And he said he actually stood there and just cried, just just taking in the glory. He said it's unreal. So God gives us this very subtle piece of reasoning that if you would just look at creation, you know that there's a God. Mm -hmm. I tell people this a lot of times, and, and I probably told y'all this before, all you got to do is look at your fingers. Mm -hmm. You just, <coughs> just look at one of them. Just look at one of them. That's unique in all the world right there. Mm -hmm. My finger, they ain't near near alike. Now, all of them look the same. They all work the same. Now, this one here's got a big scar, had eight stitches on it. No I have no nail on it. But I'm going to tell you something. That's not what makes it unique. What makes it unique is that print on there. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you look at that and say there is no God? Yours is different. Everybody's got a pointer finger. All of, our, all of them's different. Your eye, mm -hmm. your retina, is completely different than any other. You know. And so he said, they, he said they don't have any excuse because it is plain the evidence is overwhelming that there is a God. Does that mean the people in the deep, dark jungles has never heard the word whatever? Doesn't it apply to them? It applies to okay. everybody who's ever breathed on this earth. What about those that ever? Well, we're going to see that as we move on in Romans because he explains it really good in verse, in chapter 2 and 3. But he addresses that very thing there. He said that the, it is written on the heart of every, every man. There's nobody that's going to be able to have an excuse. And they say, well, they don't know about Jesus. Well, God is a just God, right? God and uh, so he knows what he's doing. You say, well, what about them people that don't know Jesus? I don't know. But he knows. Mm -hmm. he, he got it figured out for them. If they're righteous, listen, if they're righteous people. See, Abraham was in, in paradise, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened there. Abraham, Abraham didn't know who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That we know of. Mm -hmm. But God had it. He's got a plan. So I, but they will not have, if they're evil and wicked and reject God, uh, then they will have no excuse because it's written. So you got these realities of internal and external. What's in here, but what is out there. See, he, he's in the heart of every man. Solomon said, God has placed eternity in the heart of every man. So every person has and what that means, Ronnie, is when it says eternity in the heart of every man, that means God has placed the knowledge of who he is in the heart of every man. He is eternity. See, God is eternity. So what it means is God has placed the knowledge of who he is in the heart of every man, whether he be in the jungle or be in New York City. Right? I think it's in John, first, the regular John, uh, that he enlightens every man that comes into the world. To me, that says he. Yes. He, you know, he enlightens us. He lets us know he got the spirit of God. And I've always said this, and I, some of y'all have heard this probably. I'm, I know I say it a lot, 
that's why I, I, I think everybody that lives in one of these big cities needs to get out and go out to the country somewhere. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to go fishing. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Everybody needs to go hunting, even if they don't kill nothing. You know what? They need to see the handiwork of God. Mm -hmm. And they'll know it's a God. But if all you ever see is something that concrete, cut up wood, asphalt, and see a tree that's planted and manicured and groomed and planted over here. And, you know, I, 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 I be like them people. I'm like, man, this is all there is. They can't see the stars. There's too many lights. Mm -hmm. right. But when they can get out. Have you, have you noticed that when civilization has so-called advanced, the worship of Almighty God has decreased. Yep. That's why. Because they pull themselves away from God's creation, which is an evidence of who He is. And so in verse 20 it says, For His invisible attributes, namely His internal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived. They've been clear. Ever, ever since the creation of the world. In things that have been made so that they are without excuse. So there is no excuse. Paul says, God made the truth about himself available to all men everywhere from the creation of the world. And in his eternal power. So the two parts I've already discussed. These two attributes. <clears throat> They are clearly revealed, okay, about him, his eternal power and his Godhead. It is clearly in nature. The glory in Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, I won't go to all those things, but he lists four ways that creation demonstrates God's existence and his attributes. In, in Psalm, in verse 1, it says his glory in his handiwork, the heavens declare it, is what it says. The heavens declare it. And his handiwork. And in verse 2 of Psalm 91, he, he, he talks about how he speaks and how of, of his knowledge. So all of these things have been demonstrated to all mankind. Now, <clears throat> when we get into <coughs> um, <coughs> When we get into verse 26, 26 we're going to see a result. And we're not going to get there tonight. We're going to see a result of what happens when people reject uh -huh. mm -hmm. We're now. the very knowledge of God. <laughs> <coughs> and, and, and I will tell you this, okay? And then I will stop. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4, Moses warns not to fall into sin by worshiping and serving the sun, the moon, the stars, or all the starry host of heaven. And that is exactly what mankind has always done. In other words, they worship the creation because it is wonderful and mighty. Yes, the sun, they, I mean, and they understood that, you know, our energy is provided by the sun. However, God created the sun. And you know, light doesn't come from the sun, light comes from God. Now they, in the, heart, in the heart of every man, that's a truth. But what they have done is they've looked at the sun and said, let's worship the sun. Let's worship the cow or the bull or the ram or the goat. Let's worship some emperor, some man who looks like he's really smart. Let's worship a tree, Isaiah. And man, I preached on this one time <coughs> in Africa. Uh, about Isaiah, or I believe it was Isaiah, he said, you go out and you find a tree. And he said, now, you cut the tree down. It's kind of paraphrasing. Now. 
He said, now you can, you can make something with the wood. You can use it to cook with. You can use it to build a house with. You can use it to warm yourself with. But you choose to take it and carve it and bow down and worship it. A piece of wood is going out there. Now that's foolish. When you look at it that way, it's very foolish, isn't it? So right now we got people that want you to starve to death so that a frog can live. A salamander. Can live, so you gonna go cold because we ain't gonna dam it up and we ain't gonna have enough power. Are you hearing? All of this stuff is worshiping the creation, and again, and and, and this is how dumb we are, right? Because I didn't get to it, but he said, he said that you know I'll talk about I'll recap it next week, but he said considering themselves wise, they become fools. That's what he said right here in, in chapter 1. How foolish then is it for us to 